welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can do semantic text similarity tasks via the Dandelion API. Now this is actually a very very interesting topic because so far whenever you want to find the similarity between two sentences you do things like okay how far off are the words cosine similarity and all this stuff and that gives you a roughly you know good metric as to how similar two sentences or paragraphs are. However, what if you wanted to do completely semantic text similarity using an algorithm that actually understands the meaning behind your words? Well, this is where the Dandelion API comes in. Now, Dandelion.API actually has a lot of different APIs relating to natural language, such as natural language classification, entity extraction, but one of those is text similarity. And not only do they provide semantic text similarity, but also syntactic text similarity. Now this is actually a very, very interesting API and let's talk a little bit more about the backend technology of such a system. Now while I'm not completely sure as to what actually goes behind the backend of Dandelion itself, what I can say is that in order to build a system like this, I'd use a neural network. What kind? Well, of course, a recurrent neural network. Now before you watch this video, I'd recommend that you watch my audio encoders video uh, and that was a video just before this one, link in the description below. Uh, and that video will give you a good idea as to how neural networks encode and decode information. But now though, assuming that you've watched that video, let's get into how exactly I'd run a document uh, semantic similarity task. Let's get started. Now what I'm going to do over here, uh, take my pen here, let's start. Now first of all, let's just say that you've got a uh, sentence. Like for example, um, how are you? and then space, and then question mark. Now this is tokenized, so there's a space between the question mark, uh, how and you, uh, and are and you. Uh, and so, uh, as you can see, we've got this sentence here. Now, how can a deep learning algorithm understand this sentence here? Uh, now, the way it does this is by, of course, first of all, converting these words to vectors. In this case, well, word vectors. Now, before you continue, I would also recommend uh, that you check out a separate video that I will be posting a little bit later uh, about word vectors and how exactly they work. That's coming soon. Uh, but in essence, word vectors allow you to represent the semantic meaning of words within vectors. There are lots of different implementations of these, including glove and word to vec. Uh, however, essentially, the way they work is by using unsupervised learning and finding out where words occur uh, near other words. And in fact, the reason some word vectors are so magical and the reason everyone loves them so much is because you can do things like this. Imagine you wanted to do math expressions with words. And so let's just take, say, you took the entire vector expression and say that's just, you know, 100, 100 numbers um, in, a, in a simple array. Uh, and you took that vector representation for the word king. Okay, you've got that vector representation. Now let's just say you minus the vector representation for man. Okay, now you've got a vector that represents the word king without the man attribute. Now what you can do is you can actually add in the vector for woman. And guess what the output vector is? If you were to find the word closest to the output vector of that statement, guess what word you'd get? You probably guessed it right. Queen. See, these word vectors are amazing at capturing the semantic similarity, and that's why they're so useful for deep learning. They really capture what the words actually mean. But what they don't capture is what a sentence or a paragraph means. They just have a bunch of vectors. And the way you can find out what these vectors in conjunction mean is by using a neural network, which is what I'm going to show you now. So let's just say, of course, uh, I erase this over here. Now let's continue. So we're going to start off by taking a look at the network architecture. So of course, we're going to have an array of word vectors that go into an LSTM network. Let's just say it's LSTM. It can be any type of recurrent neural network that you like. Uh, and the LSTM gives us uh, a classification. Now there's a lot more going on here uh, because of course uh, you've got your dense layers, you've got your 
Uh, you've got lots of other layers and drop out and all this stuff to worry about, but this is a really high up view of what happens. Word factors to LSTM to classification. Let's just assume it's that simple for now. Now, as I mentioned in my autoencoders video, between LSTM and classification, there is an encoding. This encoding represents not just the word vector now, but the entire sentence vector. But now, if you were to take another sentence, like for example, um, I'm doing fine. Okay, this is your sentence. Now, if you were to send another pair of word vectors to the same LSTM, Okay, now these things, these two LSTMs share weights. Okay, they have the same weights. This is the same LSTM. This would also output a classification. Classification. However, what you can do is, of course, with the magic of deep learning, you can erase the classification layers and only keep the LSTM weights. Now, when you keep the LSTM weights, you're keeping the encodings of both of these sentences. Now, instead of getting an array of word vectors, you're getting a single sentence vector. Okay. Now, these sentence vectors can then individually be fed into a, into a neural network, another neural network. You can merge and concatenate these sentence vectors into one long array. You're not going to merge them, you're going to concatenate them. Okay, so just to clear that up, this is a concatenate operation here. That's concatenate. And then you're going to feed that into a dense network, which will give you the similarity. Now, how exactly would you find the similarity? Well, it's quite simple. What you're going to do is you're going to find a bunch of pairs of similar sentences that have been tagged as similar and pairs of sentences that have been tagged as non-similar. But where in the world did you find that? Well, it's actually quite simple. Where can you find lots of posts from people who are, you know, asking the same questions over and over? Of course, sites like Quora, Stack Exchange, and many more. So Quora actually made their duplicate questions dataset available for the public to use. And using that dataset, you can train a neural network like this one, and people have achieved really great accuracy. But instead of you going through all of that pain to build this entire neural network, even though Keras makes it easy for you, it's much simpler. Just use the Dandelion API. So now let's get over to the coding part where I'll show you how you can actually build an application using the Dandelion API and how you can run tech similarity using this API. Let's get to it. All right, so welcome back to the Mac part. And now that you understand the backend technology behind the Dandelion API and how exactly uh, you can find the, the text similarity between two different types of text, now let's take a look uh, at how you can actually implement a very simple text similarity application. Now, what we're going to do is first we'll head over to the dandelion.u website. This is Dandelion API. Now, this is my dashboard. Of course, you have your API token. You can always refresh your token if, if you've shared it with someone. Uh, and so, now, of course, you can also try the Dandelion API out on its demo page, which let's take a look at that first. Now, of course, they provide entity extraction. So, like, for example, you can extract entities from any sentence. Uh, and as you can see, it extracts all of the important entities. Uh, you can actually choose for either there are more tags, which when we ask it for more tags, it gives us uh, as many tags as possible. Or if you want it to be really precise in how many tags it gives us, uh, then it doesn't give us any. Uh, but if you have a nice balance between them, then you can find the right types of tags for you. Uh, however, Text similarity is what we're really interested in. Uh, now, text similarity allows you to find the similarity, semantic and syntactic, between two, t two different texts, whether it be sentences, words, or, uh, or even uh, paragraphs. Uh, now, of course, in this case, we've got sentences uh, over here. Uh, and let's just say we have uh, the English language here. Let's compute our similarity. As you can see, this is 66% semantically similar, but 0% syntactically similar because, of course, these are worded entirely differently, but they mean the exact same thing. If you were to read those two sentences, they mean the exact same thing. However, what's really, really interesting is we can actually give it, like, just, let's say, uh, define um, cat. All right, uh, now let's just take its first uh, definition. 
right? Let's paste it into uh, the dandelion API. Uh, and let's just say uh, a, uh, I, I were to write this again, uh, and I were to sort of uh, try and paraphrase the definition of a cat. Uh, let's just say, uh, All right, so this is my final sentence. Let's actually go ahead and compute our similarity. Now, as you can see, it has automatically given me the semantic and syntactic similarity. Now, I've used quite a few of the same words, so we also have high syntactic similarity. If I were to paraphrase even further, we should still have very high semantic similarity, but even lower syntactic similarity. In fact, I can even remove some of the facts here, talk about, say, for example, many breeds have been developed, and it will still give me a very high semantic similarity. So one of the great uses that you could use here is, for example, let's just say you wanted to ask someone a question through your program and see if they got the answer right. However, you are using natural language, so you can't just say if uh, answer equals this, because it can always be a few characters off or a few words off that could be, you know, represented or phrased in different ways. So how do you solve that. You solve it through the text similarity API. Uh, in fact, you can even use this for things like question deduplication and so, so much more. They also provide to APIs like text classification, uh, where you can also, of course, take in natural language classified sentiment analysis, which is really, really powerful, uh, and the integrations. But I won't be talking about those yet because those are videos that are coming soon. For now, let's focus on text similarity and how you can use the Dandelion API. Now, let's get over to the code. As you can see, this over here is our code. Uh, now, inside of here, I've got a Python file. This Python file contains the entire code that is required in order to run the Dandelion API. Let's just make this a little bit smaller so we don't have any line wrapping or anything of that sort. Uh, all right. Uh, so now, as you can see, it's, it starts off with us importing URL lib and JSON. Of course, you probably know what this is for. This is for accessing the actual REST API and, of course, uh, from there converting the response to JSON and then parsing that JSON. I start off with getting the raw input uh, of text1 and text2, which we will calculate the similarity for. I print those out, uh, which technically is not required anymore, uh, and then I create a URL for the classification. Now the way this works is we actually start off with that API prefix here, uh, and we pass it text1 as of course the first text that you gave us, but URL encoded via URL lib. We do the same thing for text number two. We tell it that the language is English, you can change this to whichever one is supported by Dandelion and you prefer, and I give it my API token. From there, I read the response that Dandelion gives me, I parse the JSON of that response and print out the percentage. Uh, now, in this case, I actually just take the response, find the similarity, multiply it by 100 once it has been, of course, uh, converted to a float due to the fact that we're parsing JSON directly. Uh, I add a percent sign to the end once I've converted it to a string, and then I print out the entire uh, thing. Again, this is the entire code that we have got for the system. Now though, in theory, if this works, we should be able to go back. I'm going to save this code. I'm going to do python main.py. All right, it's going to ask me for my first text. This time, let's go for, say, define, uh, what should we go? Uh, define car. All right, I'm going to copy this description and I'm going to paste it in. Now, what I can do is I can give it a paraphrased version of that exact same sentence. So I'm going to say, all right, there we go. I'm going to run this into Dandelion, and as you can see, it gives me a 65.65% similarity. Now, why isn't it higher, you may ask? It's because I am skipping a lot of information. I'm skipping the fact that it's a road vehicle, I'm skipping the fact that it's powered by an internal, internal combustion engine, and it's phrased differently. However, as you can see, even though I phrased it entirely differently, it gave me a 65% similarity, because it knew that we're talking talking about the same topic, and we mentioned over half of the same facts from the original sentence. 
That was a quick demo of the Dandelion API in action. I hope you enjoyed that demo of the Dandelion API. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in today. Of course, though, if you really like this content and want to see more, please do consider subscribing uh, and liking the video as it really does help out a lot. Uh, and, of course, sharing it with your family and friends or anyone else you think who may benefit from this video. Uh, apart from that, though, uh, if you have any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, leave it down in the comment section below. Uh, you can email it to me at tajimanygmail.com or tweet it to me at tajimany. Apart from that, of course, subscribing and turning on notifications whenever you, uh, whenever I release new content uh, really does help out a lot. Uh, and apart from that, though, thank you very much, everyone, for joining in today. That's going to be all I had for this tutorial. Uh, I really do hope you enjoyed a demo of the Dandelion API in action and how you can find the similarity of two different short sentences via Dandelion. Thank you very much for joining in today. Goodbye.